Hi, I'm Sam, your resident fantasy reader. And I'm Morgan, your romance reader. And we welcome you to Just One More Page. Where it's never just one more page. Let's go! Yes, I hope you guys like the new intro we have that I have not showed Sam yet. Because <laughs> I'm assuming oh, that God. you're going to put the new intro in in this episode. Oh gosh, we're a hot mess. Well, anyway, well, Sam. Well you, well, you have to send it to me. I don't have I, it in my email or nothing. I will send it to you. I forgot I did not send it to you, but I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, I hope you like the new intro. Sam, I hope you like the new intro too. Even though you know I hope I do too because I'm putting it in blind because I don't even know what it sounds like. I know what it sounds like. I know the, I know what the script says and I know what I said and I know what you said, but I haven't heard it actually all put together yet. Listen, I'll send it to you right after the podcast. I've just been having a really busy week. Um, yeah, me too. Just really busy at work. It's kind of chaotic and then actually i don't know life just chaotic i've been reading a lot of books or trying to read a lot of books this week and my eyes hurt um have you been up to anything new uh my spring class started so hopefully textbooks count as your reading and your goodreads reading goal because uh it's going in it's you know it's probably rated one star because it literally wants to make me cry um, what your textbook and- yeah, my stupid textbook. Wait, you're going to include your to... textbook and your Goodreads goal? Listen, there, it's 400 pages that I'm going to be able to add to my Goodreads goal. So yes, I will add my textbook if I can. I don't know if you can, but in, in my brain, I feel like I should count because I'm being forced to read this thing and I paid money to read this thing. So it should count. I yeah. say it should count. Well, so talking about books, I was at the dentist. I texted you this. I was at the dentist a couple of days ago, um, getting a lot of dental work done. And like, I always find it awkward just staring at the dentist's face while they're drilling into your teeth. I'm like, where am I uh-huh. supposed to stare? And <laughs> then they talk to, to you. Well, I'm really good. My dentists are really good. Like, they'll talk to me like when they're out of my mouth, and I'm like, I can actually <laughs> answer them back. Um, but then, oh, there was one time like a couple weeks ago when I went, and um, my mouth was so numb. And uh, one of the dentists, um, she was like telling me like, oh, we really love that you come here because you're so like relaxed and you listen really well and you don't complain. And I was like, listen, I don't complain because I don't, I have anxiety. <laughs> I feel right. bad. So I suck everything up. But like she was telling me all this and I'm trying to talk to her and I'm like, I cannot speak right now. My mouth, like I'm so sore. But when I was at the dentist this week, um, I was like staring up, trying to not look at the dentist at all. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, isn't there like a book I saw? And I think you own it. Or at least someone I know owns this book. And it's like about the dentist, about relationship with the dentist. Oh, and it's yes. Like a- yes, I do own that book too. It's like a brush with love or something. Yes. And so I was thinking about that book. I'm like, oh my God, is that spice? I was like, how does someone find their dentist to be like sexy while they're like drilling in their mouth? And then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know what? There are those like like um, other books in which is like monster smut. And then I started laughing. Sam. <laughs> While they were drilling in my mouth, and they, I was like, cause like, I, 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 yeah, I made myself laugh. That's you no, know that's funny. Did you have yeah. to explain it to them, or did they ask you no, why you were no, laughing? I stopped, I stopped myself. I think they thought I was in pain or something. But no, like, I was like, oh, why, no, I'm good. why are you laughing? Oh, you know, you know the books they write about dentists and like they want to like sleep with their dentists. Well, yeah, I was thinking about that, and then I was thinking about monsters, and yeah, then I wanted yeah. to like fuck an alien. So yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my week, um, literally. And then I, I mean, thankfully, I kind of covered up pretty well. But yeah, it's, that, that's so much. That's so much more entertaining than my week. I mean, also my facial expressions. I like they're so easy to read. So sometimes I'll be sitting there, like if I go to the dentist or if I go anywhere else to like doctors, you can read what I'm thinking on my face. So I'll be thinking about stuff and I'll just be like super confused or like get super mad. And I'm probably thinking like, wow, my dentist or my doctor or whoever probably thinks I'm crazy right now because of these weird emotions on my face. But in reality, I'm just like playing off like a fictional story in my head (laughs) because I'm crazy. Um, but anyway, Sam, how was your week? Any monster smut? No, no monster smut. Um, it was a crazy week at work. I almost had to call the police on somebody, so that was fun. Um, Ooh. 
drama. Yeah, I, know. I love it. I know. We literally have a uh, resident uh, whose husband keeps trying to like low key kidnap her. Um, so <laughs> it's been fun and it's been interesting. And so I was stuck at work for like an extra hour and a half last night because we almost had to call the police on him. And I was like, this is fun. This is totally what I signed up for. Like, drama mm, like I, you know listen. the thing about nursing is is that like i just wanted to help people <laughs> i just wanted to take care of them i didn't realize how bad the families were gonna be so like you know if your mom or dad are in the hospital like give your nurses a break we're doing the best we can yep i definitely think that people should have more compassion but also like in general like people just seem to like relax and like just chill out and be, i don't know like have compassion like, why, towards why other people. Why does dad have a sore throat? I don't know why dad has a sore throat. He probably is from the coughing. What do you want me to do? <laughs> like, I can't. I can't be like the main character in our in the book we're reading or have read, and just like make a potion and then take away the sore throat. They just have to heal, and I will try to make them feel better. But mm -hmm. like, I it's just this weird mentality of like nurses and doctors like are basically magic and we can make anything go away it's like no we 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 identify a problem and then we try to come up with a solution and sometimes the solution works and sometimes it doesn't and we do the yeah, best but i also think and that a lot of times doctors at least some some doctors i know they lack compassion towards people yeah. because people are in pain and they're scared and like if that's my parents like i'm scared maybe this could be un like under nice something for something else and it's scary because you don't have any control over it and i think people look at doctors and nurses in a way of being like not that you guys can solve everything but that you know more than us and you can help us oh um, no kind they of think thing. you can stop this is a you you'd better solve this situation mm. um so the gentleman has a really bad pneumonia and he's just coughing and coughing and coughing and he has a sore throat it, mm. and it won't go away until the coughing stops. And we're trying to stop the coughing, but I can't force this man to stop coughing. I can give him all the Robitussin in the world, but it's not really working. Um, and until he heals, he's going to have a sore throat. Mm. And she's like, you need to get rid of his sore throat. I'm like, I can't get rid of his sore throat. I can make his sore throat feel a little bit better, but I can't make it go away. Oh, yeah, well, hopefully so. those things get solved. <laughs> Hopefully, but if this man uh, decides to actually do what he's supposed to do mm. sorry i'm very salty this week yeah i can tell just a little bit just a little bit um but what do you like me to know your clay and update for the week sure what's going on with clay clay okay so he is as big as a cabbage so he's getting pretty big yeah mine said like, an acorn squash Ooh, wait i think that was a lot no last week was what a spaghetti squash Yes. Um, and then yes. for 80s and 90s, it was um, kids' jelly shoes. Did you ever have those? No, and I've seen them, and they look painful. They do look very, very painful. Like, I don't think that I would like to wear them. I feel like I would get blisters just looking at them. Uh -huh. But then for the movie uh, movie props, which I decided to include because I felt like this was super interesting, he's as big as the hamburger phone from Juno. Did, have you ever seen the movie Juno before? Yeah, I love Juno. Juno's yeah, a fun I movie. Do, I do too. Um, I now look back at it as an adult. I'm like, mm, there was a couple red flags. <laughs> There's always such red a flags in old movies though. Yeah, that's true. Um, but like, then again, I haven't seen the show in, or the show, the movie in forever. But I don't know. I kind of want to rewatch it again. I think it has Elliot Page in it, if I remember right. Um, yeah, I definitely want to check it out again. I, I don't think. I think the last time I watched it was maybe a couple of years, probably after it got released. But yeah, that'd be a fun movie to kind of watch on a rainy day, especially since today is like super gross outside and rainy and disgusting, and I just want sunshine. And can you believe that's going to be in the like low thirties this week? I am so mad. I'm mad. Hey, I want at my least we're summer. not back home where they got three feet of snow. Yeah, that is completely true. I do not want that, and I do not claim that in my world. But no. anyways, um, I thought we could get straight into the books, book that we're talking about today. So the book that we're going to be discussing today is from Catherine Bakewell, who also wrote We Are the Song that came out in 2022. This book that we're going to be talking about is called The Flower Heart. And this is a fancy young adult, adult, no, young, 
ro- or oh, I'm sorry, yeah, fancy young adult novel that takes place in a world where there is magic. Our main character, Clara, is powerful, but she lacks control over her gifts. So when she accidentally touches her father, a poisonous f- flower blooms. And the only way she can save him is to perform a complex spell, something that she can't do on her own. So she asks her formal friend, Xavier, for help, but he asks for something terrible in return. How far will she go to save her father and what other secrets does Xavier have? There were some trigger warnings or some content warnings that was put um, in the beginning of this book and I will read them off just so you're aware of them. Um, there's absent parent, anxiety, depression, body horror, fancy substance abuse, medical issues, non-consensual enchantment. I found it to be interesting because I didn't find this book to be like triggering out at all. No, I didn't I mean, either. So I was, I don't know. It was kind of weird that there was like, they were like, these are your trigger warnings for the beginning of the book. I was like, oh, I mean, yeah, I guess who's to say safe. what triggers people. So, you know, better safe than I mean, sorry. Yes. I, yeah, I completely, completely agree. So, um, Sam, what did you think about the book? Did you like it? I actually it? Did- enjoyed this book. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I hadn't ever heard of it, which is odd because I usually know most of the fantasy books that are coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I looked up just some review, just to get an idea of what I was about to read. And someone had labeled this cottage core fantasy. And I've heard um, like this, like, kind of like a new subgenre coming out, it, coming up in the fantasy world um, called like comfort fantasy or uh, cottage core fantasy. And so this is the first one I've read of that. And like, I, I kind of, I get it. I get it. It's, it's like comforting and like really nothing like major happens. It's really easy to understand the world. And you kind of just, you kind of just go along for the ride and it's a lot of fun. So I, I enjoyed it. I, I like it, it felt comfy. I don't know how else to explain it. It felt like a comfy book to listen to and you just enjoyed the story. So mm. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah. I, um. So, you know what? I'm the one who chose the book for this week. And then the reason why I chose it, I'll be honest with you, Sam, I didn't even realize it was fancy. I was like pretty cover. <laughs> because <laughs> you know you know how i am with pretty covers and the cover oh, of this book is absolutely it's absolutely gorgeous so i was like i really want to read it because it's just a beautiful cover and i didn't really even know what it was really about until i looked at it i was like okay this sounds like kind of interesting i was like this is more up sam's like alley than my alley and i don't know i don't think I enjoyed it as much as you did. Like, I get the fact that this book deals with some serious life issues, such as like depression, anxiety, in like a more fancy way. And I like that aspect of the book. And, you know, I do understand that this is like a comfort fantasy, but I was just bored. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was bored. And I think that I have this mis- uh, like conception of fancy novels that they all are action packed and they all have like crazy um plot lines but and i i don't know i get it i get the whole comfort thing and i get like oh it's easy to read but it's like i wanted something to happen i'm there for the drama okay <laughs> like there's a reason why i read the american diary series when i was a kid okay i'm there right. for the drama okay <laughs> but i don't know i um i was a little bit bored i rated it at three and a half stars um Mm. because like you know i did enjoy some parts of it but i felt like it lacked some plot line um like it lacked like a good like the plot line didn't go like advance and i felt like i didn't really like the relationships that were formed and i also was i didn't really like the world building into i don't know I'm, tr- I'm yeah, rambling I mean, right this, now, but I just wasn't it, a fan of I it. I really don't feel like th- this book was built for world building. It was just, it's just a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't meant, it wasn't made to be like bigger than it was. Like I know some fantasies, like they go like far expansions and everything, but I kind of like that they kind of were in these like little, little sections. Like you, you knew where you were and you knew who the characters were and there weren't like, 800 people you needed to learn who they were um and so you just kind of like i don't know you just kind of went along for the ride it was was, i I found it i found it fun i wasn't like obsessed with the the romance or anything like that um but i liked 
how the author used like flower language and spoke on how just because something seems to be difficult or you're having a hard time with it doesn't necessarily mean you're a failure like I, I kind of like some of the messages that kind of came across in this book yeah I mean I really did like the messages like I agree with that you on that one because I did say that like I like the fact that the writer did use real life issues such as like depression anxiety and write them in like a more fancy way which mm -hmm. I completely loved but I don't know. I don't really have anything else to add to our non-spoiler section. Would you like to go into our spoiler section? All right. So if you are going past this part and you have not read the book and you have no intention of reading the book, go ahead. Have fun. We're going to talk all the spoilers and all the plot lines. But if you haven't read the book and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled, just know this is your warning. This is your only warning. And if you go past this part, um, you did it to yourself. You know, we're giving you enough time to pause and get out of the podcast. So here we are. Mm -hmm. The spoiler section. Woo! Um, so, Sam, Morgan. I don't understand. Okay, so we have Xavier, okay? Yes. And Xavier, he has his magic. Um, it's not It's not bind. It's um. It's like basically like numbed down to the point where if he uses yeah. too much, he gets hurt. Why yeah. was he still allowed on the council, like, to in the beginning of the book? Like, I'm, like, that's one of the things that, like, really annoyed me about this book was that I felt like there was a lot of plot holes. And I get it. Like, it's supposed to be light and fluffy. But, like, he got his magic taken away because he was viewed as a criminal. But he didn't go to jail. He's not. They're not like, hey, we're going to send you to jail for creating this drug. We're just going to take away the magic. But also you're going to be allowed to be on this council and be able to go and do council stuff and, like, maybe take away someone's power and do, do this. So I... I didn't really understand that in the plot line. So, so they were giving him. So he was already on the council before they bound his magic. And I thought his dad was. No, he was his. Um, he joined the council when he was fifteen. Oh yeah. And then he built the Euphoria um, potion, which went against the the council's like rules, I guess. But in order for him to make. Because he made the euphoria. And it seems like in this world, if you make it, you have to be the one who can, like, unmake it. Like, if you curse somebody, you have to be the one to bless them kind of thing. Like, there's, like, a yin and a yang thing. Um, so it sounds like what ended up happening is that they needed him to still be able to make the the antidote. And it was kind of like, because you're from this prominent family and you're considered one of the council's favorite families and everything, we're going to give you this opportunity to kind of, like, right your wrong. And if you take someone off the council, I'm guessing it's probably a big deal and people are going to mm. notice, especially if you're on Moorwood. So we'll keep you on the council and let you kind of play the the part. Uh, but it really, he didn't really have that much to like, he didn't have much pull because when they first were saying to Clara that they can bind her magic or take it away, he tried to stand up for her and they were kind of, they kind of just pushed him off. Um, so he didn't really have as much like power as it seems like he does, even though he has the council title and the pin and everything, but I, they had to hold on. He has to hold on to his magic long enough to create the cure, but they didn't want him to be so powerful that he was going to be able to like ruin anything, which kind of is like a catch 22. It's like, how are you supposed to undo something that you did full powered and now you're half powered and you're trying to like mm -hmm. fix it. But that that's kind of like my theory on it. I also kind of feel bad for him, though, because he really was just trying to help his sister, who I'm yeah. sure, like, was probably dealing with depression, because they call it colic, and that he mm -hmm. was just trying to help her. And I feel bad about the fact that he got his magic taken away, and I wish that the writer went more in depth about his family dynamic, like, his fa whole family, because it seems like his dad, like, was really harsh on him. And I think he even said in the book that he was scared of his dad. So I kind of wish that something happened with his like I know his mom came back with his sisters and they were like really happy to see him but like I wish something happened with the dad of him standing up to his dad and I also was just really disappointed in the fact that he really did get his magic taken away because before it was just kind of like like in some ways just binded I guess and if that makes sense like where he yeah. could use his power but it would drain him and then they were like nope we're just gonna take your whole all your magic away and i'm sure that really sucks for someone who is used to having his magic and mm. i wish that there was a little bit more 
and I'm going to say it, angst or something in which like he's upset about losing his magic, losing a part of himself. But in reality, mm-hmm. he's just like, yeah, it's okay. I'm fine. Like I can live without it. It's, you know, it's weird not having it, but you know, it's whatever. And I'm just like, no, I want, I want you to fight for it. I wanted something yeah. to happen, but instead it just felt very flat. As for the romance in this novel, I did like the beginning of their romance, but I felt like it fell flat. I felt like the chemistry kind of was there, but the romance wasn't. And if this book was mostly focused on their friendship, then just don't do any romance. Just focus on the friendship. Focus on her saving her father. Don't focus on the romance. Because the romance, in reality, did not feel like a young adult romance. It felt more like a lower middle grade um, read romance in which is like, a little bit fluffy, but like nothing's really there because it's obviously for kids. The romance was neither here nor there for me. I I really could have cared less on that, um, mm-hmm. but I I don't disagree with you on like they should have just left the the friendship arc and not had to be a romance arc. Just like you can have like friendship love where like you just care about each other, but there's no romantic love. Like it's a platonic love, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and that would have been fine for me and I wouldn't have like said anything about it. So I don't disagree with that. I kind of was enjoying like watching their like friendship or like rebuild after they kind of had like what, like five or six year gap yeah. where they weren't talking to each other. I think it's kind of a, uh, it, it's not a good reason as to why he'd stopped talking to her was because his dad was like, my dad doesn't want me to talk to you anymore. What teenager is going to listen to their parents? Well, I also Seriously. feel like, I also feel like Xavier was not a good person because Xavier no, like, he wasn't. No, well, he, yeah, because he literally was, like, wanting to take her magic because he knew if he didn't, like, you know, wasn't able to um, find a cure, he would be without his magic. So he's like, I'll take your magic. And in reality, that, like, really, really, <laughs> like, um, had a huge backlash on him considering the fact that he could not control it. But I just don't think he was a good person at all. And I think that it's it's kind of complicated the fact that she f- used him in such a good way because they were childhood friends, but he's just not that same person. And I feel like the writer could have gone into a more deeper dive with that character and maybe doing like a mm. character arc of him turning into a better person. I also yeah. found it really interesting how Clara's magic actually had a voice. And I really think that this is something that we all can deal with and all can Um, sympathize with is the fact that we all have voices in our head that are like telling you you're not good enough like right we're like I want to be a writer like I love writing but like I'll always write a paragraph and I'll look at it and be like this is horrible trash and it just (laughs) made me think so much of Clara because like we all go through we all have those negative voices in our heads telling us we're not good enough telling us that whatever we do we're gonna be horrible at and I could really relate to her. And I think that the writer did a fantastic job at writing that this magic of hers has yeah. um, taken control over her. And I think in real life, if you let the negative things about yourself, negative things you think about yourself in life get a hold of you, it can be suffocating and it can be hard. And I think that we all like if you're able to snap out of that negative mindset, you're able to control your own magic in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got a question for you. So there's two points of views in this book where, um, so we, we meet Clara's mom for like half a second and she starts talking about how magic should just be and the people who buy the potions and stuff, um, accept the consequences of their own actions, whether they make it or not. Um, and then there's the council who's saying like, you can't do this at all. Um, this is against our rules. We're not going to do this. You can't be making potions that are going to affect the heart or the mind or like, I guess her mom had made one that caused you to have the flu or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's, whose train of thinking do you agree with? Do you agree with the counselor? Or do you agree with Clara's mom? Cause I feel like they all both brought up really good points. I, who do, well, I'm going to ask you though. I wanna, no, you tell me first Sam. Who do you think? No, I want to, I asked you the question. You go ah. first. Okay. Don't hate me. I agree okay. with Clara's mom because of the fact that too. I do you okay because I like maybe 10 years ago I'd be like oh no rules need to be set in place people need to follow but like I'm pretty much under the under like I pretty much feel like you're your own person I mean of course there should be age limits because I feel like as a 
like growing brain, you're like, I think people's minds don't fully mature until like a certain age. And then that's when you can make choices. But like, people make their own choices. And like, I like, I won't go out and try like a drug, because I know that's bad for me. Um, mm. And I know the risk that comes with it. So if you know the risk that comes with it, I mean, then again, it's hard to compare because some people are get put in par- I don't know. Yeah, it's I feel like it's like, complicated. If if you walked into Clara's mom's shop looking for a specific item, nobody coerced you. Nobody made you do it. Nobody was like, like forcing you. No, you, your hand was not forced to do it. It's like going and buying a pack of cigarettes. Nobody's forcing you to go buy a pack of cigarettes. Um, then you're making the choice for yourself, understanding the consequences. And I, I really like, I feel like I wanted Clara's mom to be this like, evil person who was like i don't know like the typical evil witch um but i mean some of the things she said made sense it was like pete i don't make people do anything they don't want to do they're kind of becoming in fully informed and if they want it they can have it like what am i how am i supposed to tell like tell them no or to negate them this ability to do something just because this like set of people who have decided they're going to make all the rules make the rules because it seems like the council is like appointed they're not elected so they they make up the rules as they go without anybody actually like like the the greater like magic community being able to um be able to put their opinions in and then you're just forced to follow the rules so I, I, I agree. I actually, I, I mildly agree with Clara's mom and I kind of wish this wasn't a standalone and that we could like see if, uh, if Clara goes down the road that her mom goes down or if she follows the council. But then again, I, I don't, I do and I don't agree. And I think that part of me is thinking about the real life and I need to not think yeah. about real life and how people, some people are, um, become addicts because of the environment mm. they grow up into. And that's what I'm kind of thinking about. But that besides thinking about this world, I think that yes and no, that it should be like people should be held accountable. But I also think that there are a lot of people out there who want to do harm. So if you go Mm -hmm. take like a bottle for like, I don't know, like whatever, and then it turns into something completely different, that's not what you wanted. It's a risk. And yes, people are taking their own will. But then again, if you're misinformed, you may be making the wrong mistakes. So I can see both sides. I do think that you're your own person. You can make your own decisions. But I do think that there should be some sort of person that can regulate everything and make sure that they don't harm people. And that if you're going to take something to make you happy and it causes you to sleep in bed all day and causes you to basically not want to get out like a like kind of like depression Mm -hmm. and everyone around you has to suffer and go through it because i have family members who are dealing with addiction and it's hard and it's tough and it's super heart-wrenching yeah i I don't know it's it's complicated I, i get what you're saying so i'm i'm a big believer in free will and the ability to do whatever you want as long as it doesn't cause harm and strife to the people around you so if i decide i'm going to if I decide to do something and I make a decision, the decision should only affect me. It shouldn't affect the people around me. So I'm not going to choose to drink and drive, but if I want to drink, obviously not now, but if I'm going to drink and I'm going to drink in excess, I, as long as like I haven't caused harm to people around me and I, I'm still functioning, then what decisions I make are my decisions. Now, if I have cirrhosis of the liver or whatever else comes with, I'm not saying I'm going to become an alcoholic, uh, but like all the consequences that come along with it, I have to accept the consequences of my actions, but mm-hmm. my actions affect the people around me and my actions shouldn't affect the world as a whole. What I do in my own privacy, what I do on my own time, as long as it's not causing harm, I should be allowed to do. Yeah. That's, that, mean, that's kind I, of the, the train of thought I go down. I mean, I feel like I could get more into it, but I feel like yeah. I am lacking sleep right now <laughs> this is my second <laughs> cup of coffee and i still feel awake that's probably why i'm like all over the place um mm-hmm. but before we end this podcast i do want to ask you about the ending of the book did you like it um i i appreciated the whole arc of like in the beginning she was about to get her powers taken away and at the end she becomes a full-fledged witch um so yeah i mean i i kind of enjoyed the ending like her the two people she loved the most were there to support her and that she finally like saw her dreams and she was going to be able to do what she wished which was to help people and become a full witch so i i like the ending 
I do like the fact that, like, when she finally takes her vow, like, everything, like, turns into flowers around, like, in the um, Mm -hmm. room, which I found to be super beautiful. Um, And I I, I mean, like, I love the aspect. And I like the aspect that throughout the whole book, we get, like, different flowers that she blooms um, out Mm -hmm. and then get the meaning for them. And I was going to ask you, if you do know, do you have a favorite flower? I really don't have a favorite flower, believe it or not. I love flowers, but I don't really have like one that is like my favorite. No. No. I so my favorite flower is um like well I have a couple, but one of my favorite ones is the bellflower. Have, mm-hmm. Do you know what that looks like? Yes. So the reason why I like that is because it reminds me of like Thumbelina and like fairies and as a kid my mom grew them in the garden and I used to always like pretend there was fairies around um because I was a weird kid (laughs) (laughs) so I mean like I did that until like I was 22 I'm just kidding um but no I I used to love those flowers and so they remind me a lot of my mom and so does um lilies lilies remind me a lot of my mom too um so Mm. those are definitely like some of my favorite flowers I have but yeah, I just, I just, I just appreciate flowers, but I don't have like one that reminds me of anything or I have like a specific memory attached to, but I just find, I find flowers pretty and I enjoy mm-hmm. looking at them. And I know there's like yeah. a really cool, um, like language to flowers too. Um, and I always find that interesting that like each colored rose represents something different and each flower represents like a different emotion or, um, like like feeling so and then how you give flowers to people sometimes like people actually put thought into the language of flowers and then give flowers based on that and I think that's really nice and really interesting too that's what I usually do with my friends like I um yellow means like friendship and I usually give Mm -hmm. yellow roses to friends although sometimes I just be like this is pretty I'm gonna buy it for people because (laughs) that's my favorite thing to do whenever like people I work with are having like are becoming really sad or they're just dealing with stuff. I love to give flowers to people because it always cheers them up. I think last week, one of the girls I worked with, she was just having like a really off day and she was just like, just because I'll be honest with you, um, working where I work can be really tough, um, mm-hmm. especially dealing with people who act like you're, they're not the nicest. And I, I definitely think if you're not having the best days and then people are being really mean to you, it can be really hard mentally and so she was just having a really bad mental health day and so the next day I brought her flowers and Sam she started tearing up and I was like don't cry Aww. don't cry don't cry I don't like when people cry because <laughs> I don't oh, know how gosh. to like be like I pet their head and like I don't know how to like calm I don't know I don't know how to deal with people <laughs> crying I'm so bad at it even though I cry so much but Sam do you have any final thoughts about this book uh no i i was pleasantly surprised and i'm i'm kind of glad that uh you chose this one because i i mean i enjoyed i know it wasn't your favorite but i definitely enjoyed well i'm glad you did so next week we're going to be reading a graphic novel called bell bella 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 of the ball by mari costi and this is the second graphic novel that we are going to be reading um our first one was being what was it blackwood Blackwood. No. Yep. Yeah, Blackwood. So yep. this is our second one. You know what? This is the first time I put a, a book on our list where I just like the cover. Do you know what's about? Because I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, I know it's LGBTQ. That's about the okay. most I know about it. <laughs> so I try. I looked at the description of this book and I tried to like write down a little blurb about it, but literally I was like, I this doesn't make any sense. So <laughs> I'm just going to read off this sentence. This is okay. a novel that follows Bella Hawkins, who is a wallflower. Like she, no one really notices her, but she ends up in a love triangle after tutoring the girlfriend of her crush. It's this a like why choose? Not like, Sam. What did you make? Or why are you making us read? I, I just I I like the cover, and I was like, this is LGBTQ, which is right up your alley, and it's a graphic novel, and we haven't done a graphic novel in a while, so I, I it was kind of like less about the description and more about like um, listen, if, if in your genre, it's a medium we haven't read in a while, and the cover looked cool. So you listen, know. I'm not complaining. I, like, let's go, lesbians, let's go. Like, do you know that, do you know that, do you know that joke? Hopefully, you know that joke. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I hope Anyways. you guys enjoyed this episode, this chaotic episode that's all over the place because Morgan needs a nap. And uh, we will see you guys next week. 
Um, if you guys love this episode and would like to support us and like to push our podcast out there for other people to check out, please rate us on Spotify and follow us on Spotify, on YouTube, and on Apple Podcasts and Audible. And Sam, tell them about the rest of our socials. Okay, so if you think we're absolutely hilarious, because fun fact, my friends, we are. Uh, we do have a TikTok, which is just one more page podcast. And for all the pictures and um, anything else we decide to post and stories and stuff, we do have an Instagram. It is just one more page official. And if you are one of the like 500 people from California who's been listening to our podcast because we want to know what the heck is going on because we keep getting a pop, please DM us and tell us what you, what you enjoy and don't enjoy about this podcast because we need feedback and y'all seem to be like listening to us pretty hardcore so let us know what's going on anyway thank you guys so much for listening we love you all we appreciate you all and we will talk to you on next sunday okay bye yeah bye